the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I, I hope you're going to take time to listen to our video. I appreciate you taking time to, to stop and see what's going on. And hope you take interest to listen to the entire video. We're going to break them down into segments, uh, A, B, C, and D. Bar, put them out on YouTube. And the topic of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm telling you about this fact of why we need to study the Word of God and be doers of the Word of God. Because it's it's obvious that some people don't want to be doers of the Word of God. Uh, it's, it's befuddles me sometimes when you think about everybody that say they profess they're Christian, but then they don't do what, don't bear the fruits of a Christian. The fruits of the Spirit find in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And then the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There's no law. But what we see is some people are actually teaching their children to be, uh, to hate, to hurt, to do bad things, to ignore the teaching of Christ. And we we know the history, all of you do. That's why some people are trying to ban books or try to reindoctrinate people to think a different way, but Reindoctrination doesn't work if you're still teaching a child to steal, kill, and destroy. The script I put up here said, does dehumanizing others mean it is okay with God to steal, kill, and destroy? That's in John 10.10. 10. Does God accept the dehumanizing, first of all, because you got to remember, <laughs> we, Christ, we're not the creation. Right? God created us. No body, whether you are a, a black supremacist or a white supremacist, can make somebody different from what God sees them to be. We're all creation of God. And the Bible said if you receive and confess your mouth the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, as your personal Lord and Savior in your heart, that God's not raised. That God has, excuse me, God has raised him from the dead, that I should be saved. But if you believe not, that's a different story. But I'm talking about if you believe that God raised the dead and you confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus, you're saying is that he's Lord in your life, not you. And if he's Lord in your life, then you should do what he taught. And you know he didn't teach discrimination. He didn't teach to kill people. He didn't teach to destroy people. So he taught to love one another. And if you're doing opposite of those things because you feel it's validated in the eyes of man or you feel that that's worth your eternal death, you know, or the, is it worth giving up your eternal life to have things here in this present world that benefits you and discriminates or go against other people? just cause you to steal, kill, and destroy from other people for your personal benefit, that you're saying is that your personal life outweighs eternal life. That you're willing to give up eternal life. You know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes in him shall not perish but an everlasting life. And if you're saying that it's more important for a personal gain, for personal pride, for, like I said, black supremacy or white supremacy, that you believe that those things are more important than eternal life, that you choose to teach yourself, teach your children to go for eternal death. Eternal death means disconnected from God. If you think that's more important, uh, I'd like you to put that on the scale. We talked about a scale of life today. When you put God on the scale, you put Christ on the scale, you put the Holy Spirit on the scale, and then you put your works. You know, everything that you can try to gain for yourself and your children, 
you put those on the scale, it's imbalance. Because one is going to be higher than the other. And when you have a false balance, that's when you can find yourself out of sync with God and in jeopardy for eternal death. Eternal death means separated from God. And that's the choice that you have to make. And I'm recommending choose life. Amen. So uh, I hope, I think you're going to enjoy this segment. I know you will. And all I want you to do is just remember that Yeshua, Jesus, is Lord. And if you love him, keep his commandment. And his commandment is not about steal, kill, and destroy, but the life and have kind of life more abundantly. Amen? All right. Like I said, we're going to break it down. Don't forget to subscribe and leave comments if you can. And i see you when I see you. God bless you. Check it later. I hope you enjoy the video. Bye-bye. <laughs> it says here in um, Luke 6, 19, hey. there was a certain rich man meaning that this is a absolute, this this did happen. Yeah, this is a person, yeah, yeah. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Hmm. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sore, hmm. and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Man, hmm. I can preach about that. Yes, sir. Moreover, so, moreover, the mm. dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel mm. into Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. The rich man also died and was buried. <laughs> that tells you something. <laughs> something there's a, there's a, a distinction difference. right there. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. you died, yeah. but you but you had all this stuff up here in the beginning, though, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. And what happened? What happened to him? And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Mm. Being in torments. He ain't playing golf S. now. He ain't playing golf now, is it? Torments with an S. <laughs> Go because it's, it's eternal, right? Yeah. Or at least it's uh, until it's the judgment it's day. It's more than one type of torment. Come on now. Come on. And see if Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm. That's got to be another torture. That's, well, that's yeah, another it, part of the term, tor torment. I, you I see think, those yeah. who, who are, who, who are uh, mm -hmm. blessed. Yeah. And on it, the other side. That way he said weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham. Mm. Have mercy on me. Well. And send Lazarus mm. that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water mm. and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. You know, what did they they told me uh when I when I they first did this study? Did you find it interesting that the man has not changed? Because he didn't say, Abraham, could you dip your finger in the water? Yeah. Yeah. And he it, went straight to, to, to the poor man. He went straight to the poor man. He went straight to the person who, in his lifetime, yeah. had no authority. And, and yet, he didn't even ask to be removed uh -uh. from his situation because he knew. He knew. He was where he was supposed to be. Ooh, ooh. And you know what's funny? is that he recognized that Lazarus was clean enough to dip his finger. I don't think if his finger was covered in excrement, <laughs> he would have still wanted him to dip it in water. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad for that. <laughs> that's bad. That is bad when you said he was, he was torment enough. Those flames say, if I get the moisture out of it, I don't care. As long as I get some moisture. Woo! Deep, deep, deep. I, I did I turn it yet? Let me there. But go. you know what? But what? this also lets you know. What? When 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 the when those uh demonic forces are cast out, they're in such dry places where they Woo. are in the same misery. There is no moisture there. There is Woo. nothing but torment. 
lest they inhabit a physical being. Mm, deep. Yeah, that's true. I was thinking about the fact that when I equate how the Bible sometimes exchanged the water for the word. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking. It's like I just need, I just need a faith, right? That it is, it's a mustard seed. It's a grain of a mustard seed, right? <laughs> if I just get a grain, I can do something with it. Homeboy was like, just give me a little bit of water. Give me a little bit of word now. Give me, if I can get some word, I, I, I can make it. I can make it. You know, it's interesting. I just thought of that. It just came to mind. What else happened? Okay, but Abraham said, "Son." <laughs> Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, in that lifetime, received thy good things. Mm. So those people are doing all that murdering and raping and and and, and all types of oppressing other people for yeah. personal gain. God is saying, "Is remember in your lifetime all the good things that thou had, mm. and then likewise Lazarus mm. evil things." Mm, we, do, do we need? Do that need to equate even for today? For people to understand. Well, look, go this ahead. Is, this is this is also something to understand. Those people who are tormented by their existence, mm -hmm. that it is evil. It is evil. Yeah. Is that what he said, didn't it? Likewise, evil things. So, so could we say that? Discrimination is evil. Yes. Can can we say that the, the the lynching and burning people alive is evil? Yeah. We can't we can also we? say that not giving to the poor is evil. Mm -hmm. Not not housing mm -hmm. the homeless is evil. Not yeah. eating those who are hungry. Is yeah. Evil. Come on. Or lying on somebody to cause them. Look, there's people that are, who are dead. There's people who are incarcerated. There's people who lost their jobs. There's people who lost their family over a lie. Yeah. And oh, what you call evil things. That that, that's, just, that's just evil. I mean, that's just obvious evil. That is something, ain't it, brother? And he said it right. Remember, I like. I think that's something we're trying to tell people as we close out. Anyway, in it, remember. Just remember. Remember your lifetime. Remember your lifetime. And and what you did, especially. I'm always thinking, I think I always equate the fact is when you go to the first two commandments, right? The two great commandments, right? Yeah. To love the Lord thy God, all heart, all the soul, all the mind, all the strength. But the second he said is like unto it, love thy neighbors thyself. <laughs> Right? In other yeah. words, you should love your neighbor, not do evil things to your neighbor. Yeah. That's what we're trying and, to say, and, isn't and, it? And, and this is the thing. Not doing nothing is evil. You condone it. You condone Thank it. Thank you. So many have done it. Somebody's still doing it today. Yeah. Some, I think the thing about even talking about this campaign and stuff going on right now, guys, you ignore it. And you want to willfully say that something is a lie, knowing that you know the facts, knowing that you know the situation, knowing that you, matter of fact, some of you conspiring to see a way out for somebody on a legal jeopardy, legal system. Let me get, let's, let's elect them. Let's elect them, brother Yeah. So could we elect them, guess what he can do? He can pardon himself. That's what he's going to do. He's going to pardon himself and then he's going to go and use the same tools that you said that you are against the other person using. You want it to be used on them. Yeah. It, it's, 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 uh, it's evil. It's evil. And you they're actually conspiring to do it. That's yeah. what they're doing. It is, it is just... Uh, it's, it's demonic. It's part yeah. It, it has to be. I mean, yeah. it's, there, I mean, it's like it's like the scripture said, "Who has bewitched you?" <laughs> exactly, because that's what it, that's who has bewitched you. Go ahead, finish, finish twenty six. Okay. okay, but hmm. now he is comforted, mm -hmm. and now art, and thou art tormented. Wow, 
And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither mm -mm. can they pass to us that would come from thence. He just said, look, people, we're talking about eternal life. There will be no way out if you choose. And no help. It, you can't. Nobody is going to help you. No, they can't. I believe. I believe there will be some that wouldn't want to, to help. help. Yeah. Because of the love that that's within them. You talking about somebody's mother or somebody's parents yes, saying that? Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, of course, they would want to go and 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 and, and help. Yeah. Some would be dead to replace. Some some what? would dead to, to replace themselves yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't. You can't. You go do the, <laughs> you can't. I, I like that part about the fact is, if you want, if you made to the good side, you can't go eat. Yeah, you can't <laughs> hey! You can't I go love to the what they think. <laughs> so then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him mm. to my father's house. Mm. Now he just said that he can't go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> he did not know it. To my father's house. <laughs> For I have five brethren. Mm. that he may testify unto them, mm. lest they also come into this place of torment. Now, that's, that not, not everybody, yeah. just his it, brother. He's self oh, that's I didn't even catch that part. I, but I will equate the fact that that is what we're doing. <laughs> that's what the ministry is supposed to be doing. That what Christ taught all of us to go preach the gospel. The gospel. To do right? the work of the ministry. Come That's on, what we're supposed to be doing. Exactly. You don't. You don't just go to church to for, to a building and get your word, you get your freedom. Expected to do, to do the work of the ministry, and like you said last week, the ministry is outside of the four walls of the church building. It's it's, it's in your home. It's in your job. It's in the streets you go to. And, and, and just carry, just talking about whatever y'all talk about today in church <laughs> with one another and with other people and to people that don't believe, just talking about that makes a difference because you're planting a seed, just like this platform. All we do is plant a seed of watering, right? That's all we're doing. We are planting or watering, planting or watering. You, you go to church services, I hope they're planting, and I'm hoping that it's falling on good ground. And I hope that that ground becomes fruitful and multiplied by giving other people. I just want to throw that, that was my, my pitch for today. But what's the last part of that? What happened? What, well, the same move did it. But Abraham said, oh, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Stay. Yes. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Because one did. Yes. And they're still not persuaded. Exactly. And, and look, I, I, I'll take it to from a physical to a spiritual. How many spiritual dead people rose from that to be alive? You see what I'm saying? It? Born again. These people. Now, we do find that those people have effective ministry, though, right? And all of it have when we do give our testimony. Yeah. That, that we, we can actually uh, tell somebody, I'm the miracle. And most people can, some people, I'll tell you, you know the truth, most people can see when it's a person that's different, yeah. you know? And, and that's all we want to be able to say. So I think I think we covered a lot, man. I, I, that's some deep stuff, ain't it? That's some stuff to chew on, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, it is. And it's trying, we're just trying to tell people, look, look, come on. You got to put the God equation. You got to put the eternal light in your decision-making, in your calculus. If you do that, then you will recognize that the, you won't have a false balance. 
you have a balance that, that weighs in the eternal factor and the God factor and the importance of the, the to me, that scale lines up when you put Christ on it. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Okay, now he, oh, I see there's God right there. Oh, eternal life right there. Because we, we balance. But we, we take him out of the That's why they say he must be born again. That's what they said to say you, you need to have Christ in your life. Because the balance, you you without him, you 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 won't get what you putting on the scale. You're, you're out of balance. You're you're <laughs> you're unequally yoked. Woo! Woo! And the fact is you have no weight, like you said. No weight. You have no, that's the problem. Your works, let me say your work, dead works, basically. Yep. They don't have no balance in the scale. So we're trying to say, let us all put on Christ, ooh, man, so that you have weight yep. to your eternal life. Because without that weight, without that balance in your life, you have death. He said, lest you, she, I mean, it started all the way from her, Eve and Adam. Lest you eat, of, I mean, God told him, if you eat of this tree, of knowledge of good and evil, you should surely die. And that has been the equation, <laughs> calculus of many since that time until they choose Christ. And that's all we want to, it doesn't make sense, it's just fair, just put those variables into your equation. Put God, and you know people want to take God out of the equation, you know that. Put Christ, we don't talk, don't take, don't, I don't care whether he's a black Jesus or white Jesus, just take, just leave the flesh part out and focus on the spiritual part, which is what he did, right? That was in John 3, 16, wasn't it? Or John uh, 3, chapter 3. He was talking about you born of water, but you gotta be born of the spirit. If y'all keep staying in the in the flesh, you're gonna miss God. Ain't nobody sitting there saying we good, we righteous. Somebody, it was a, one of the videos, and as I close out, one of the videos, the guy said, you think you're righteous. He was talking, there's a preacher that's talking on the campus. To, to kids, he you know he'd been invited to go to the campus and speak, <laughs> and they be they be challenging him, you know, and and one of the challenges was, uh, you think you're righteous, you think you know it all, you know the man said, I beg the difference, I don't know nothing except for Christ. Well, that was there's a word of that, there's a scripture that I may I may know his glory. That was that one thing we used to quote one time. That I may know him. Yeah. Right? And 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 the guy said, I am telling you right now, I am not a righteous person. Not by my ability. Yeah. Not not me. If you if everybody everybody looking to us right now, Brother Addison agree. If you look into Brother Addison and not Christ in him. He's not righteous. Oh, by 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 far. By far. I, I am the least. I, <laughs> I am so unworthy. That's how we all should feel that way, don't we? You said the truth. And in and of myself, I am as dumb. Yes. My worthy. works and everything else. And that's why we worry about the man that said, I never when he said I never knew you. He, they were quoting, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out devils in your name? Did I not do one? You heard that word, what that works was in it, wasn't it? Yeah. Many wonderful works. Yeah. And you, all your works are filthy. All your righteousness is filthy rags. My righteousness is filthy rags. Brother Adams did not say he has arrived. I'm not saying I have arrived. All I'm trying to say is say the only thing you should get out of these scriptures today, I mean, this message today, this platform, and every other platform we do is what does the word say? That's all that matters, isn't it? All you and I try to do is link those words, tie those words, tie those scriptures into the conversation. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I, I hope that you enjoyed the session that you just listened to, and I hope you get to look at 
all this is all the sessions for this segment that we did or this study session or the discussion that we did today uh we did this on the i think it's it's, it's, it's the august i think it was the i think it's the 13th of august that this session was done uh, and like i said all the sessions you will see throughout the week and, and, and i just want you to remember here's the topic we did today let me go ahead and put that up you can see what we I, I know you saw it at the beginning of the session and i just want to make sure you got it here wrap it up on the closing of the session it says does the human eye that others mean is okay with god to steal kill and destroy following john 10 10. <laughs> and i hope that you got the answer which is no it's it's not okay with god to steal, kill, destroy. It's not okay with God to discriminate against other people, your fellow man. It's not okay. It's not okay to, to try to get as much as you can for your life, as much as you can for your family or your friends, and think it's okay with God that you do these things at the, at the uh, detrimental of somebody else's life. That you dehumanize other people so you can go ahead and and, and do the atrocities of history or do the atrocity of the thing or to sit there and, 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 and ignore truth and accept the lie or conspire to do something that you know will only give somebody else who's trying to do bad things a way out. You are believers and you need to show people who you are as a believer so that you can make a difference in their life. We come, we are called to preach the gospel. And the equation of the gospel is eternal life. And therefore, we want us to remind ourselves and remind those we come in contact with that it's about eternal life. It doesn't matter whether some people have not faith in eternal life. It matters to us because we're believers. And as believers, we believe in eternal life. We make the confession that Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. We want to bear the fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, because such there's no law. We want to have eternal life just within John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but an everlasting life. We want you to understand that vain glory does not equal eternal life. We want you to understand that a false balance does not equal eternal life. We want you, and like I said, put it in a scale, right? If you put it in a scale, you sit there and say that if God is not in your equation, in the Holy Spirit, in eternal life is not an equation of decision, then the scale is not balanced. And if it's not balanced, it equals eternal death. But if you put God in the equation of the decision, you put eternal life in the equation of the decision, so that what you do does and focus on eternal life, it makes a difference but not to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what we talked about today. And I hope you enjoy the session, and I hope you come back and do, listen to all the sessions, and continue to deal with the platform, support this platform, don't get to subscribe, um, and leave comments if you can. And remember, Yeshua is, is Lord, amen? So, no vain glory. Focus on truth, focus on light. Focus on eternal light. Don't let that be in jeopardy because of personal gain. Because all those who died before you, judgment has come to them. Don't let judgment come to you because you already made the right choice and your behavior lines up with that choice. But if your behavior don't line up with the choice, then you, you're right. You have eternal death <laughs> and there's a lake of fire waiting for you. And that's what your choice and we we'll give you that free choice. Or oh, I I don't give it to you. God gives it to you. I just hope you choose life. Amen. God bless you. I see you when I see you. And like I said, don't get to subscribe. God bless. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in us.
rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.